lesson is about the nine most popular pleat styles. We talk about what to take into consideration when you're marking pleats and spaces on your flat panel width during the fabrication stage. We also talk about functionality for each pleat style, how well it traverses and how well it stacks. We'll show you how to form each pleat and how to finish them properly. So let's get started. These are called knife pleats or one finger pleats. They are simply stitched and not tapped and creased down the front. They're very functional and they create a very tight stack because of the single fold and the lack of bulk in the header. You can make them any size from this small size all the way up to this larger size. If you make even more of the small size closer together, you begin to get a pencil pleat look. The depth of your fold though is important to consider, especially if these are going to be functional. These full size pleat ones have plenty of fabric in the fold that allows it, the fabric to maintain that fold all the way to the floor. Whereas these smaller ones create a very shallow fold and so the panel tends to flare at the bottom. The smaller your folds, the more likely you'll have to put a memory stitch at the back of the folds to keep it under control. Also note that if you make these too big, you're creating a lot of weight out forward of the ring, which can cause it to start to droop and create a kink here at the bottom of the buckram. So the size of the folds that you choose for your panel just really depends on the look and the functionality and the overall proportions of the panel and what you're going for. Now, traditionally, when marking pleats and spaces on a panel, in order to work around seams and either too much fabric or too little fabric, we make adjustments to the pleat size, how much we put in each pleat, and we make all the spaces the exact same size. That's reversed when we're working with these knife pleats. That is because if one of your knife pleats is even slightly larger or smaller than the others, it becomes very apparent when they're stacked close together that odd one will stick out or recede and be very obviously a different size. So when you're marking pleats and spaces on your flat width and you need to work around seams, make the adjustments in the space between your pleats and make all of your pleats exactly the same size. That's your knife pleat, a very clean, very simple and easy to do modern look for your panels. This is a cone pleat, also known as a cartridge pleat. It is simply stitched, but unlike the knife pleat, we then round out, we, we uh, steam out and smooth out the crease in the front so that we get a rounded cone shape. The cone pleat can be finished one of two ways. Once you've sewn the pleat in, you can simply fold it back and tag gun about a half inch to three quarter inches away from the seam through both layers with short tags like so. That helps form the cone and keeps it in place, keeps it from flopping around. This is a very fast way to anchor the cones, but it doesn't always help to maintain the shape of the cone. You can also stuff your cones. I like to use this very, very inexpensive pipe insulation. You can buy it at the DIY store in the plumbing section. It comes in long eight foot lengths and it cuts very easily. So you measure the length of your cone, which in this case is the four inch buckram, subtract a half inch because I don't want it to come all the way up to the top 
and I cut a piece that's uh, three and a half inches. Now this is too wide to go in there, so it's easy enough to cut some off. I'll place a pin through the lining layer so that as I insert the pipe insulation, the lining doesn't uh, shove down in there. Roll this up very, very tight. And that shapes your cone nicely. You can, if it flops around too much, still go ahead and tag gun it if you want to anchor it a little bit more. So as you can see, that's two different ways to finish your cone pleats. This way with the tag gun only is very quick and easy and but it doesn't necessarily maintain the shape of the cone all the way down it gives a slightly more casual look if you stuff this tight enough that foam won't move it won't drop out the bottom of the cone when the panel is hanging but if you're worried about it use a heavy duty um, drapery pin and when you shove it in the back seam here be sure to catch some of the foam and that will anchor it permanently now note that the larger you make your cones, the more likely you are going to get a little bit of a kink here below the um, buckram area. That's just because all of the weight of the fabric is forward of the ring and hanging out here, you add um, insulation to that, that adds to the weight. And so it, it will tend to, to push, uh, to sink here and to cause a little bit of a buckle. When you're marking pleats for your cone or your cartridge pleats, as we said before, traditionally you make adjustments to the size of the pleats and leave all your spaces the same size. But with a cone pleat, you want to make all your pleats the same size. So if you need to work around seams, you make adjustments in the size of your spaces but make sure all your cones are exactly the same size. That's your cone pleat, also known as a cartridge pleat. This is your box pleat. A very tailored look. It is simply a pleat that's sewn as normal, but then flattened back and tacked at the corners here and here to the space in the back, creating this very tailored look. Now, it can be functional, but it's not a clean function, and, and your stack is going to be very large, and it doesn't stack well. You can make it functional if the client doesn't mind the way this looks, but it's better if it's done as a stationary panel. For marking the pleats and spaces for this style of pleat header, we want to keep all of the pleats the same size. That's because when they fold back and flatten out, it would be very obvious if one was a different size from the other. By the same token though, in this particular case, we also want to keep our space sizes equal because this reveal between the pleats needs to look the same from one to the next. So you have a little less wiggle room in terms of working around seams uh, and such with this particular style, only because you don't really want to make uh, adjustments to the size of the pleats or adjustments to the size of the spaces. They all need to be, all the pleats need to be the same size and all the spaces need to be the same size as much as possible. And go ahead and experiment with pleat sizes and space sizes to get different looks. Smaller pleats would show a smaller box and a wider space. 
uh, bigger pleats, triple fullness, would have these boxes pretty much almost touching each other. So they're different looks, and you can experiment with that. What you're looking at here are five and a half inch pleats that flatten out to about two and a half to three quarter inches wide and four inch spaces in between. That is your box pleat. This is your traditional three finger French pinch pleat. It's stitched and then the pleat is pinched down into three fingers like so and tacked at the bottom. The French pinch pleat style and the Europe pleat style both require us to be able to pinch this pleat down into three fingers. Once you've stitched this in, you open it up and flatten out that seam. Bring it up and directly above the seam, pinch about one inch down and push it down so that the fabric folds outwards from the seam and you are directly above the seam. Roll this towards you so that these two folds are level and then roll it back in this direction and it should be level on all three. I like to secure with binder clips. Other workrooms use other types of clips, but this holds the pleat shape, the three fingers in place for me until I can take it to the machine. Even though I'm maybe tacking a French pleat down here, I still like to put two clips on it in order to train the whole pleat to these three folds. Again, Open it up, flatten out that seam under there, come straight up, pinch about an inch and go straight down so that you're over the seam. Roll towards you until this is level and then roll back in the other direction. and they should all be level. As you're pinching, make sure that you can feel the lining is in each one of these fingers. Sometimes it gets bunched up and it doesn't follow the folding and you need to unfold it and play with it and get that lining up inside of the fingers here. These are extra thick, so the binder clips are having a little trouble hanging on. Okay. So these two are ready to take to the tacker, and I can either tack them down here below the buckram for a French pinch pleat, or I could tack them up at the top for a Euro pleat. Ordinarily, you would tack at the bottom of the buckram on the buckram, but because of the thickness of the fabric and the buckram on this one, We've tacked it just below the buckram, and you can see that that is perfectly acceptable. Sometimes, if the fabric is super thick, we can see how this wants to open up at the top. Now, if that's a look that you like, you can leave it, but if you would prefer to have something a little tighter, you can tack at the top and the bottom to get this look. If you just want to let it spread like so, but it's spreading too much, say like this one, you can take a binder clip or any kind of clip that's thick enough and put it on there for a few minutes to help train that fabric to pinch down a little tighter. This particular pleat style is very functional. The stack is a little bit heavy only because you've got triple fingers in the pleats, but this is your very traditional functional drapery panel that drapes out into beautiful folds. When marking pleats and spaces, now you can 
make adjustments in the pleat to work around seams, but try to leave all the spaces the same size. This is the French pinch pleat, three finger. This is a French pinch pleat, but it is two fingers. You stitch the seam, flatten it out, then bring the two sides together and tack it at the bottom. For your French pinch pleat and for your Euro pleats, you need to be able to pinch this down into two fingers. Open it up, flatten out that seam with your finger, then flatten the pleat down and center it over the seam, like so. When you bring the two sides up, they should be level with each other. And make sure as you are pinching it that the lining is in the fingers also. I like to hold it with binder clips, both top and bottom, to train the whole pleat. One more time. Open it up and flatten it out at that seam. Flatten the whole pleat so it's centered over the seam. Make sure your lining is also smooth in there. <clears throat> and pinch it up into two fingers. Now these are ready to take to the tacker and either tack below the buckram for the French pinch pleat or at the top for the Euro pleat. The two finger pinch pleat is nice because it's very functional it stacks nice and tight. You don't have all the extra bulk of a third finger in each one of these pleats. If you don't have a lot of fabric and a traditional three pleat, uh, three finger pleat would make pleats that look very shallow and tiny, you could always switch to a two finger pleat because the same fabric in that pleat is now distributed between two fingers instead of three and so is a little more substantial. This is also sometimes referred to as a butterfly pleat. So this is your pinch pleat, two fingers.